Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I think I've mentioned it many times over the years, but pond fishing is definitely my favorite type of fishing. You know, and we're going to be doing a whole lot of that today. We're going to take a look back at some of our favorite fishing episodes that we've filmed over the years. We're also going to introduce you to probably the coolest house you've ever seen for an angler. But first, we're going to catch up with Jay Harvey having a great morning of bass fishing with his son on their favorite pond. There we go. Nice fish. Thank Jared you. wants to go fishing every time he has the opportunity. He uh, he walks from the house to the pond, rides his bike to our pond and fishes, and then of course every time he has the chance to go with me, he's ready to go. The pond that's behind us here is about 25 acres, and we've caught fish in it up around five and six pounds. Uh, we've caught cat channel cat in it, we've caught crappie in it, but the uh, black bass in here are real healthy, they're chunky, and uh, they bite pretty well, and the average fish you'll catch in this pond is probably somewhere between two and four pounds. We thought we'd fish topwaters here early, try to fish above this coontail moss before we go try to fish in it. This pond's relatively shallow and it's clear water and you can see there's lots of vegetation. Fish are laying down in it for cover, and, but uh, it's hard to fish. You gotta stay above it too. I go fishing probably uh, in the evenings when I get to when I'm home and every once in a while my dad will be home and we'll go like to the lake or to the lake or come over here or go to the river. What's it feel like? He don't feel like one of the big ones. Oh. That's a good fish. There you go. A couple more reels. Huh? Looks like a twin brother to the last one. Pretty nice fish. Here you go. Let him go. Man. Put him in on it over here on the right. Hold it, hold it, hold it. One thing about a farm pond is you can use these small boats or you can wade or you can fish in inner tubes. Whereas if you're gonna to go to a big lake, you almost have to have a boat. And uh, right now, uh, it's just easier to go and fish the farm ponds. And it seems like I have more success in farm ponds than I do anywhere else. He's young, he gets a quick start. Then I usually just slowly, it's the tortoise and the hare. I sabotage him. I land his fish and I clip his line. He has to retie, so I get to keep fishing while he's working. Guess what? You catch none while I catch a bunch. Sometimes I catch more fish or the bigger fish, and sometimes he does. And we have a friendly rivalry. Uh, we went fishing a couple days ago, and he caught more fish, but I caught the biggest one. So it all evens out in the end. Ooh, come out of the moss. Pull him around. Ooh, and he barely hooked. Oh. They are never nasty. Jeremy has something that looks a lot like that. It's a bomber. Is what he uses. We're just using medium tackle, uh, six to seven foot rods with a twelve to fifteen pound line and. Uh, medium action uh, bait cast reels and spinning rods. Uh, sometimes throwing these soft plastics, the spinning rod works better in the wind because you don't get backlashes. And uh, we try to match the uh, tackle to the fish. Oh, good 
Fifth grade. Bring him around your left hand. I'm trying, but he ain't one. Oh, don't go in the lily pads. Working. He's in there good. Huh? He's in there good. Oh, 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 oh. come on, come on. Get him on. out on top. Hello. I was just casting out and letting it go over the uh, lily pads. Then when it got into a hole, I just let it sink down and she came and got it. We'll make bets or something, see who catches the most. And it's mostly me beating him. Every once in a while, he'll get a, he'll get a lucky day and beat me. Dad, you got him in good. Yeah. Yeah, you got him in the throat. If you look at this fish, see where he's hooked down in the throat? If you pull that hook out, you're probably gonna damage the fish and he's gonna bleed and eventually may die. But uh, what we found out over the years, if you'll just reach in and clip that line, that hook will rust out in just a few days and the fish will be perfectly healthy. You know, if you get a chance to take your children, whether it's your boy or your girl, out to a farm pond in a small boat or just wading or in inner tubes, it's a great experience. It's a chance to teach them something, a chance just to spend quality time together and, and uh, have a really good time in the great outdoors. Awesome. That real down to Well, we had a really good morning. As usual, Jared did catch more fish. He caught the biggest fish, but uh, I guess that's kind of part of it. Yeah, I've done it so much, enough. I've gotten the experience and where to go. Mm, I'll probably be able to do it for the rest of my life. You know, one of the great things about fishing farm ponds is that they're ideally suited for taking kids. Coming up next, we're gonna look at one of our favorite pieces from 2005 of Wade Free fishing a farm pond with his boys. There you go. It's not that you catch a lot of fish. It's that you get to go. Right. Or it's not that you get to shoot a lot of ducks or doves, it's what? That you get to go. It's all about the going. I know that was a good cast. That looks like a good one. He's going to break his line if he doesn't watch it. Bring him over. That looks like a nice one. Yeah. Did he fight? Oh, yeah. Man. Gee! I think he may break my line. I don't have a very big line on here. Woo! Look at him! He's feisty. Check that one out, guys! Whoa! Three pounder. What? That thing will go four something or five. Okay. Four. Okay, Cooper. That's what you're fishing for. I think it's real important that we keep the kids of today in some really positive activities like fishing. I know we got a lot of competition from everything from football, baseball, lots of sports, and these kids are involved in all that also, but there's nothing like a day on the pond 
fishing for anything. They don't, you don't have to catch much. A pole and a little water and a worm or two is, is a great thing and it can be uh, remembered by a kid forever. I can remember some of my fishing trips when I was five, six, seven years old and they were like they were yesterday. We're out here today catching these bluegill. They're about hand size and we're throwing them back and we're also catching a lot of bass, but the main thing is that they're catching and having a good time. The main thing I found with these kids is keep it entertaining. Uh, if you're fishing with really young kids, keep it short and take lots of snacks and drinks and keep them comfortable. You don't want to burn them out, but it's, it's hard to burn out a kid on a fishing trip if the fish are biting. I didn't think that'd ever be anything better than catching a five or a six pound bass, but there is. And it's seeing a kid catch a five or a six ounce bluegill or a five pound bass. So I think once you get to the, the period where you enjoy the kids and watching them catch fish, uh, it really becomes a, a true satisfaction and a love. And I'm kind of there, so. You know, one of my favorite things while out fishing is to see the look on a kid's face when they catch a really big fish. Coming up next, we're going to dig a little deeper in the vault to 1999 for a priceless moment shared between three brothers out pond fishing. Seen anything? I don't, the first time to ever fish. It's like it's a pretty nice pond. Good and clear, it's got nice bass in it. It's got some pretty good sized bass in it. It's got some big ones in it too. Yeah. I mean that one hit right at the edge of the water. Yeah, I've had two do that to me. Kind of unexpected. It, I mean, it took him. Hit it hard, as soon as it hit it, started running with it. Oh, just missed one, Ty. Yeah, Amy. just missed it. Up in this tree here. It's a big one, man. Gosh! God, come on in, man. Come on. You're the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Ty, look at the size of this fish. Look at this fish. Look at this fish. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! 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 It's a big one! Oh my gosh! Oh! Oh! Oh, it's big! It's big! Oh my gosh! Stop! Stop! Don't go in! Oh man! Oh! Oh man, oh my gosh, this is the biggest fish I've ever saw in my life, oh my gosh, this is a big fish, can I keep him, please, oh my gosh, oh man. Man, he hit and I couldn't get him in. He was just, he was fighting bad. He's about five, man. He's got to be. He caught another big one, man. Oh, no, that ain't as big as that last one. What did he catch him? I'm sticking with this. I'm staying with this one. Do one more cast and let's head on home, okay? There it goes. Let's go get us some dinner. I'm getting, I'm getting hungry. Some baseball practice wore me out. Okay. Yeah. That sure was a nice fish you caught today, Zach. Thanks, man. You caught a nice one too, man. That was a big old fish that you caught. I know. Hey, me and you, we caught two big ones. Okay, last cast. Hey, I don't want to leave. Yeah, you too. When do you think we can come back to this pond? I don't know. Maybe we 
recommend to come back someday. Yeah, that's a nice point, man. Yeah, well, maybe we'll talk them be best. Talk them in the bring us back tomorrow. Yeah. You forgot me. I want to. Back in the early 90s, we did several farm pond fishing segments with Haskell Mosley. And this particular one comes from 1992 as he's out pond fishing with friend Thor Carlson. That's a bat. How oh, he went in the moss on me though. He's in the moss on me. I got. If I can get him out from under there. He's Too long. Out. He's out. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting hung. How? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got on there? I don't know. <laughs> Look at there. <laughs> Woo. Mercy. <laughs> If I could get out. <laughs> Boy, listen, you, you, don't, you don't want to watch this. Now that's a little Look at that mouthful of plug he's got. Yeah. I'm afraid to touch him. Let's feed this one to him. <laughs> you, want, you want to feed him? Yeah, let's feed this one to him. I'm trying to figure out a way to get all that lip without getting a handful of plugs. I'll just reach down Hooks. there and get it. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, oh, that's a nice little bass. I'll go about a pound and a half. Pound and a half. <laughs> Ah, boy, I tell you what, this old plug is a good way to get emergency room business. How I much kept, you weigh, Hack? I kept emergency room in band-aids one year with that thing. What, do you go six? Just about. He won't miss it by much. Well, he won't weigh them. Cause yeah, we'd rather lie about it. Bye. Get in. <laughs> he didn't know I was going to turn him loose anyway. He nearly kissed you back. <laughs> you know, if I could, I'd probably fish every day all the time. But one gentleman in Skyatook has found a way that he can do just that, fish anytime he wants, right from his living room. <laughs> Hi there, come on in, let me show you around. This is my kitchen here that we've got countertops that, that look like granite, but they're not really granite. And then, of course, stove, a refrigerator. We've got a master bedroom downstairs here, and then my main little thing is my fishing hole over here that I cut a hole in the floor here that where I can fish in the winter time and when it's too hot in the summertime, which is not too often, it's, I fish every day somewhere, but all we have to do is just lift these up and, and Set them off to the side here, and we got a four by four fishing hole that I can set right here in my recliner. And I like to use shad for bait. And I got me a shad right here, ready to catch you a catfish. Me and one of my friends was fishing over at Ulagal probably 15 years ago, and. And we was just tied up to a tree there, and this old man come up there, and he said, you're fishing in my fishing hole. He said, I want you to move. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, I, I didn't know that you, this was your fishing hole, I said. And he said, well, it is. He said, I've put some trees right under where you're at, and he said, I'm gonna fish here. He said, you, you need to get off of it. So I thought right then, you know, I'll, I'll make me a place one of these times where I can fish every day when I want to fish and however I want to fish. And so I thought I'll just go ahead and build my cabin and put that hole in the floor and this will be my wintertime hole. 
Usually I hold the ore I lay it here on my table, you know, and just keep my hand on it like that. Because I almost lost it the other night. There was a big one, grabbed it, and he had my pole almost into the water there before, or into the hole before I finally caught it. But usually I just leave my hand lay on it like that because it's resting on the arm of my chair. When I cut this hole in the floor, I just, I wondered how I was gonna keep the air out of it and the bugs and the snakes and stuff from coming up in here. So I had a guy down in Tulsa to build me this flume. It's, it's four foot wide by six foot deep. And I, I let it down into the water. So the, when you open the hole up, no air can get up in it in the winter time. And, and uh, there's no bugs that can get up in it, no snakes or anything can crawl up that tin and so far I haven't had a, a lick of problem with it at all with the bugs, snakes, frogs, nothing nothing can get up in it. Then of course I got my little live well there that when I catch my fish I can lay them in that plastic container there, take them off the hook and throw them back down in my hole or whenever I get ready to clean a mess of them if I'm wanting to eat them while well, I got a place to hold them there till I get ready to clean them. Yeah, last night I was watching the news and I caught two really, really nice catfish. It's just something that I've always wanted to do, you know. I've had people come from all over the United States looking at it. Just, I had some people three weeks ago just drove down to Illinois, took probably a hundred pictures of it visited an hour and drove back you know they just they they're like everybody else they'd never heard of anything like it you know they don't remember the cabin but they'd never forget the, the hole in the living room floor <laughs>